This is Warriors Outsiders with Drew and Brand. The best show on the planet. Welcome in to Warriors Outsiders brought to you by Fit Aid. This is a good day to drink Fit Aid. Oh, this is going to be a very fun show. Yeah, midday, just you, you had all that enthusiasm yes. and, and fun during the game, right? You enjoyed post game, and then you take your Fit Aid, this low calorie citrus medley, uh huh, pound it, right? And you are just rocking and rolling. And I don't know if it's raining out there yet in the Bay Area, but it's supposed to rain oh, tonight, yeah, I so about stay that. inside, drink your Fit Aid, yeah, watch just, the show. Just have a day, yeah, have a freaking day. Grant, hey, that's Drew Schiller, by the way. That I'm Grant Liffin. Yes, you called me Grant. What's up? I just said that was fun. That was fun, it you know. When things just kind of come together and work, yeah. it's it's a nice it's a nice thing to see. It is. Now, where the Warriors have been frustrated through this mm -hmm, season mm -hmm. is they have similar games like this. This is the best game of the year, in my opinion. Because ever. they didn't have to come back from 20 no, down. No, they played the whole game very well. They just against a very, very good team. Yes. So, um, and they responded after last game as well. So right. it was a, a multitude of things. But the so bet on the Lakers to win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's, that's my point. The frustration is <laughs> yeah. usually it goes right after that. But it was only fitting for the Warriors to have a performance like this when Clay Thompson speaks to yep. the media right before the game because it is a reminder to everyone out there of what could have been this year and what hopefully will be next season and we're going to show a clip in a little bit mm -hmm. in which we're going to show you imagine what will happen when clay thompson is on the floor at Ooh, that moment in time. i love imagining imagination okay but before we get to imagine that, imagine there's no limit to what you can imagine <laughs> all right before we get to that dewey cox yes dewey cox yeah, yeah. underrated movie uh, I, agree. Uh, we, I agree. I think the most ex re the reason we're most excited right now is because yeah. we both got our predictions correct. Yeah. yeah, that's the only reason we're excited right Facts. now. The Warriors could have lost by forty, and it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, you said Steph Curry would have thirty or more points. Yeah, and it came on late. He got give those me those free throws. throws. He got those free throws in he the missed end. Missed one though. I know. Got you nervous. Yeah. Thirty six minutes, thirty two points. Mm -hmm. He was ten of twenty from the field, six of nine from three, five boards, nine assists. But Drew in this game. Mm -hmm. He had his big first quarter. Yes. And then he just, he would like pick his times. Right. And it was just, it was so efficient. He just played really, really well. And then defensively, I think that's where I want to just defensively, I'm he was you. great. Yes. The 14 points in the first quarter. Uh, I mean, he, I mean, he didn't shut down Donovan Mitchell no. by, by any stretch. But Mitchell still finished with 24 points, which is really funny. I know, but it was kind of inefficient. No, I know, but it just felt like a game where, like, he probably had 15 or something, but he just casually dropped 24. He's the, he is that good. Right. Uh, he's no bubble Donovan he Mitchell. He's not bubble. Because that wasn't necessarily real life. But anyway, we're not here to disparage Donovan Mitchell because he is really good. But, yeah, you're right. The rest of the game, there was no barrage it was just, oh, the Warriors kind of need a bucket right now. Oh, there's Steph making Rudy Gobert look like he can't even be on the court. That step back three that he hit mm. the left wing, it was nasty. And then the finish over Gobert. Did he get away with an extra step? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but no, not in this game. Uh, that was awesome. He also had that three where he pump faked like two guys, like fly yeah, by him. Yeah, it was like it was The like reload. Art. It was choreography at its best. Everyone was just kind of flying by. Looked like For a fountain. Sure. Was not expecting that, I don't know where uh, that came from you right there. Happened. But, hey, six career games now on his birthday. Yeah. He's averaging 26 and a half points per game and shooting almost 53% from beyond the arc. 31 that, for 59. That is much better than the, the way that I play on my birthday. Um, because just, Hey, the Warriors did win an NBA Finals game on your birthday a couple years 30th ago. 30th birthday. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was a fun one. June Everyone, 1st. Do, do the math on that one. Right. Okay, so uh, Drew, that was Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Great game. Now, I mean, would you want to hear from him just a little bit? Just hear what he had to right say? Now? Yeah, let's we just have Steph Curry sound? Do you want to do it? Um, sure. It. All right, here's okay. some Steph Curry sound for you. Steph, happy birthday. Thank you very much. As people get older, birthdays kind of lose their shine. But was this one special? Life is special. People you're around. Um, a lot of love today. Uh, obviously, me and Nico, the birthday boys. Um, 
except 13 years apart. But uh, it was pretty, pretty awesome. Um, be able to play, you know, bring some energy today. And, uh, you know, obviously people reaching out all, all day. I, I appreciate the love and the messages and all that. And uh, obviously to get a win and enjoy the 48 minutes out there was awesome. And now I get to go home and spend some time with the fam. Um, should, should be a pretty, pretty dope day. So I don't think I, uh, I don't think it's lost its zest at all. It's just different. Steph, I really, I realize it's just one game, but for everything that happened today, I mean, the, the win, the stop of the losing streak, your birthday and all that, would you call it storybook? Nah, because I missed the free throw and I missed my 33rd point for the 33rd birthday. <laughs> High standards over here. <laughs> what does uh, Jordan Poole provide to you guys? He um, is a, he's a spark plug, and he's obviously shown uh, moments before he went down to Orlando. Obviously, what he what he did last year, you know, as a rookie coming in and being kind of thrust into that situation, you know, with, with a bunch of other young guys and a lot of injuries and and all that. <clears throat> to uh, to coming in this year, he put so much work in. He's a, he is a a dog when it comes to that he puts the time in he has a lot of confidence in himself and it's just about figuring out where he can be the most impactful for our team and i think going down to orlando and just playing getting reps in showcasing what he can do um i think he proved to himself who cares what anybody else says he proved to himself that he you know belongs out there on this level and you know, the, what, three games he's he's played, he's gotten better and better, more aggressive, more assertive. And, you know, we needed that 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 presence tonight off the bench. Um, made some big shots, you know, stayed out of foul trouble and just made us made his presence felt. And that was huge for us. That's what can you say? Two things there from Steph that you got to love. Number one, he calls himself out for missing the free throw and not getting 33 points yep. on his 33rd birthday. And then in the middle of his answer regarding his birthday, just unsolicited, wants to remind everybody that it's also Nico Mannion's birthday. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't mention Albert Einstein, also his birthday. Right. Um, so I don't, you know. Whoa, whoa. Was Einstein? He wasn't the gravity guy. No, that's Isaac Newton. Right, okay, because yeah. Steph and gravity. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's where I was going with that. He's not the gravity The gravity guy. guy. That's, that's one way to put it. <laughs> um, all right, so Draymond Green predictions. I said he would have 12 or more assists. Well, he just said 12. 12 is fine. 11 points, 12 boards, 12 assists, 4 steals, only 1 turnover, mm -hmm. a plus 17. Draymond Green tonight, and I just named a bunch of stats that were offensive related mostly rebounds obviously not um and steals four of them yeah no he was really really good offensively just he had his i mean he had all 11 points in the first half yes he was just he was attacking you, you could see the energy he wanted to put up threes uh -huh. that was important but again defensively he was sensational that one turnover that he threw the ball directly to the other team following a pass that did the exact same thing. I think it was from Bazemore. Yes. They got a layup the other way. Yep. Draymond does the same thing, but instead Draymond gets back, blows up a three and one. It's and almost just, like you don't know that we're about to show that clip. And here it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second clip we're going to oh, show. My God. Yeah. Okay. So hold on. We're talking about Draymond here. Watch this right here. Steph gets trapped at half court, right? Yes. Look at Draymond yes. from half court attack right there and finish over Rudy Gobert. He, he was not doing that even no. two weeks ago. No, because, because he, it was the All Star break, right? <laughs> but three weeks ago he yes. was. Yeah. No, but he's now in great shape, and he knows that there, when there are opportunities for him to score, he has to take advantage of them. Now, I'd like to show that clip one more time Let's because do remember it. when we said that we were going to mention Clay? I I remember. Okay, so next season when Clay Thompson is back mm -hmm. and these sorts of plays happen where Steph is on fire and teams have to trap him at half court by the way James Harden don't show him that video no nope. because that doesn't happen to anybody else no nope. but we're gonna roll that clip again here we go right okay one. so no offense to Andrew Wiggins there at the top of the key he's not Clay Thompson but imagine when that's Clay Thompson yeah and he's wide open and Draymond's like oh I don't even need yeah to go but in that's for this. but that's the issue and I, I do 
I agree with that, uh -huh. and that's what they've they've really survived in the past. But I really liked the fact that I don't even care who was over there. Right. I'm glad he did. If Steph Curry was over there, I still want him taking that the way he just did that right there. You have to be aggressive. Yeah, but that's a layup for Steph and Clay, a wide open three. Well, so anyway. Steph on those wide open threes, I don't know. Very good point. Now, the four steals from Draymond. They weren't like cheap steals. Oh, Bogdanovich is going to have nightmares about Draymond Green. Uh, how about Royce O'Neal? Yeah. <laughs> Draymond just hooked the ball away from him at half court and goes in and gets the breakaway dunk. But you mentioned that play in which he turns it over and then blows up the three on one. It needs to be shown. The world yeah. needs to see it. Yeah, next time just let me know what highlights we're playing just so yeah. I, I don't look as dumb as I yeah. normally well, do. Or when I told you, you could have said, hey, what are the clips? Yeah, that's, that's a good uh, point, too. Right, highlight helpful. number two, please. I can't wait to find out what this one is. <laughs> so. Don't make this pass, Raymond. I promise don't you it's do not it. going to work out. Don't it, it do it. It's not going to work out. I've seen this before. Oh! Yeah. There are – how many players can not only cause the miss there but then knock the ball away right there? Yeah, but we've seen that. Countless times. I know. He does this. But I actually fans, am more confident on them not scoring when he goes back. By the way, we are. Oh, they, they clipped Ugh. it off. Conley there, yeah. air balls a three. Yes. Because James Wiseman, who we're going to talk about, don't worry, did a great job there of gapping Conley and then contesting. And yeah, the, the wind took it. It went from left to right, air ball, it landed out of bounds. Really? A lot of wind and chase? Yeah. Wow. That's well, crazy. because they're getting the ventilation going. Yeah, you got to get it For ready. the fans, the fans to, come to come back. It's crazy how it all works out that I way. I know, I know. Um, quickly, Drew, let's do a little friend of the show of the game. Okay. We could have picked so many players, but we're going to move like the big people who've done great things in this game to Drew or False, of as course. we always do. But two names that definitely uh, stood out, and mm -hmm. one, I, it's very under the radar for me on this one. Kelly Oubre, he didn't have that much of an impact offensively. Right, right. But defensively, he was just, he was up in their face. Uh -huh. He was doing what he does. And, you know, there was points earlier this season, if he went 0 for 3 from 3 right. and 2 for 8 from the field, you're like, oh, my God, Kelly's just been bad. But he played within the offense. Yeah. And he, he, I really liked his game tonight. Yes. He had a nice pass to James Wiseman, which we'll uh, discuss. Um Go back if you're going to rewatch this game, which you should want to because it was such a, yeah. a great performance from the Warriors. Fair. The very first possession, he gets switched onto Rudy Gobert, Ubre, yeah, and really battled him down low. He helped cause a miss, and then he went up and got the rebound. I was about to tweet out, I've seen enough play Kelly at center. Were you? Just like that. And, and then, then you I realized. Delete, 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 delete. Right, because it yeah. would have been like, yeah, that was That silly, was like, he, he, and then you move on. Uh, who's your friend of the show of the game? Eric Paschal. Yeah. Um, made two huge shots in the fourth quarter. Correct. The Warriors were up 103 to 102, and he gets a rebound, dribbles down, and just drills an 18-footer, like no passes. It was, a, it was an important shot because the Jazz had just had a chance to take the lead. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, a little breathing room. And then, of course, the huge three to make it 118 to 109. But it's funny because I did tweet out, so did you, at the beginning of the second quarter, uh, no Eric Paschal. Is he just right. going to be out of the rotation this whole game? I didn't tweet that part, but yeah. No, but you tweeted out, no Eric Paschal. So far. Yeah. Which was surprising. <laughs> and sure enough, he does get into the game, but yeah. we were thinking that he wasn't even going to be out there, so it, this was nice it, for me. Yeah, we, I, it was truly a, a, definitely a change of pace, but right. he came in, and he also made his presence felt defensively, too. He had some nice switches out there, and he was actually picking up <laughs> past the He was pressuring line. Donovan Mitchell, his he, buddy. Yeah, he also got yeah. beat a couple times, but still, Eric Paschal, just huh? a, a good game. All for right, sure. we're going to go to break right now. When we come back, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, uh, James Wiseman and us two, the five of us, all going to hang out. It's a good meantime. unit. That's a good unit. That's a good second unit. Yeah, I, I'm in. Welcome back to Warriors Outsiders, brought to you by Fit Aid. Drew Schiller, Grant Liffman. Drew or false? This was the best game for Andrew Wiggins in a Warriors uniform. I'm not even going to say Drew on that one. I'm just going to say facts. Factual. Yes. Yeah. This, without question, I mean... Whatever he did last season, it was just kind of cool to see him in a Warriors uniform, but didn't really matter. The games didn't matter. He had that monster performance in the fourth quarter earlier this year against the Pistons. And the Lakers, he hit those three threes. That was key. And against the Heat, he also hit the dagger three in the corner, had 23 points and eight rebounds. And he's had some other good games sprinkled in there. Also, defensively, he's had some monster games throughout the season. But he, on both ends of the court in this one, against the, the Jazz, the Warriors needed him. No doubt his best performance in a Warriors uniform. Uh, and we should have known that he was going to play this well because the first Warriors bucket, he had like a Kobe-esque, yes. Michael Jordan-esque fadeaway over Donovan Mitchell on the baseline that was just filthy. And then throughout the game, the finishes at the rim, 
and there's zero hesitation on the three, like mm -hmm. deep threes. This was this was like first ballot Hall of Famer Andrew <laughs> well, Wiggins. He also he just doesn't get a lot of calls, and I don't know I, yeah. I don't know what it is about him, and he it's just maybe he's stronger than people think, so he just absorbs contact a little better. But he gets hit a lot when he's going to the hoop. Unfortunately, I I think part of the reason is because there are times where. He just isn't super demonstrative That's when true. he like he kind of flails a little bit, and I think referees reward guys who are like going straight at the rim and don't That's true. kind of avoid contact, which is kind of stupid as well because the point of basketball a lot of times is to avoid your defender, and a lot of people don't do that, trying to either right? you know it's just whatever. Trying How about to get that back. sweet give and go that he and Steph had? Oh yeah, like in the first quarter, like Wiggins that burst down the court gives it to Steph, gets it back. Um, yeah, he, the way he was able to finish at the rim, though. No, he was he, – and then Ooh. defensively, just the, the work he put yes. in on Donovan Mitchell mm -hmm. and, and just you saw him switching onto Ingles or Bogdanovich, and he was just – he was all over the place. Yes, he was. And he's picking up, crossing half court. He's picking up, pressing the ball. Um, Andrew Wiggins, this is the version of Andrew Wiggins that people are – you know, there's a reason to be excited. Season high 28, Warriors career high 28 points, 12 of 16 from the field. Three of four from three, uh, three boards, two assists, three steals, yep. plus 19. He was, I mean, I know Steph had an incredible game. Draymond had an incredible game. But Andrew Wiggins might have been the difference in this game at the end. Facts. Yeah. And, and Jordan Poole, obviously, who we're well, about to talk about. But Wiggins, like, he was, they don't win this game without Andrew Wiggins. Sure or false, Jordan Poole is 25 years old. Uh, that's false. Jordan oh. Poole is 21 years old. Wow, he yeah. can drink. He can. Did aid no alcohol in it, but if you, but if if it you did, want to spike it. But if he did want to spike it, he can. Legally. He can. He would not get in trouble. Um, I loved how Draymond uh, gave some love to Chris Weems mm -hmm. and to the other war, uh, coaches on the Warriors staff. Chris DeMarco has been yes. working with him since the beginning. Luke Lauch Correct. has him this season. Absolutely. And... That is important to, to remember because this is like a collective organizational thing. And for Jordan to be able to be at this point right now and to not have, you know, the idea of going to the G League be the demotion mm -hmm. and all of that, like we're going to almost forget that that even happened right. with the way that he has been playing. And I, I know that the offense is what people are, are focused on, and, and rightfully so, because he's, he's not – ever going to be like a guy who is known as being a defender. Right. But he needs to be able to hold his own on that end of the floor. And he's doing that. Mm -hmm. Like he was not getting taken advantage of whatsoever. And this is a very smart jazz team. He was really solid defensively. He was playing within the team defense. And that, and yes. that's, you, you, you're, uh -huh. you know, no matter what, you're going to be better if you're playing within the flow of the defense and playing yep. with them. Um, if the jazz decided that they were just going to attack him, we don't know what would have happened, but right. he, he didn't get exposed at any point, really. So at that point, you just kind of, I mean, you wonder if it's him getting better. Is it teams need to attack him more? We will see what happens. But we the will. more he's out there, teams will realize that he's part of the scouting report. Now. Yes, and the threes that, that he hit, obviously, uh, were impressive. But his first bucket, when he like took Rudy Gobert out near half court yeah. and then just, boom, went by him and finished at the rim still, his finishing in the paint is the biggest area of growth that we have seen from him, like without question. And then also, no turnovers. Yes. Three assists, no turnovers. That's he was decisive. He was yes. very decisive. And we know that Steve Kerr has said multiple times that he is not a pure point guard. He's a combo guard. And so Steve doesn't want to have him, you know, having to think about all the point guard stuff. For him to not turn the ball over whatsoever is is huge. Yeah. Like, he is just being smart. He's making good decisions. Decisive. That's the key word. 21 years old. It's just, it's, it, remember, he came in as a 20-year-old back end of the first round mm -hmm. rookie, and you just don't know what you're going to get from him. And you see the tools there. It's about becoming consistent yeah. there. And you know, the sky's the limit. You just, you He's don't He's closing know. games now against yeah. the Utah Jazz. <laughs> I did not see that coming so quickly, no. but Jordan Poole, good for him. Yes. Uh, Drew Falls, something in particular stuck out to you about James Wiseman's really good game today? The, well, actually, it's kind of false because I would say there were multiple things right. that stuck out, but the hands. Yes. James Wiseman has shown uh, an inability at times to corral loose balls, to get rebounds, to, to catch in traffic. In this game, that was, I would say, the, the most positive sign of development. Mm -hmm. There was that sequence uh, in which... 
the Jazz had just hit a three, an English corner three to make it 89 to 83, and you're going, uh-oh. Then, great finish off the Steph Curry pick and roll, catches it in traffic, goes up and scores, then blocks Donovan Mitchell, then Oubre with the pass over the top, he catches it with one hand. And it was, it was a fast. He, he, put it was. Some, he put some speed under it, and he was moving, and that's something, I know it sounds so just like, you know, elementary, but no, that's a real tough play yes. and something he hasn't been making. Correct. And, it, and he converted. And then he had a big offensive rebound and scored yep. over Gobert when the Jazz were really making their push and getting close. Uh, in fact, it gave the Warriors just a four-point lead early in the fourth. And then there was another drop-off pass from Jordan Poole yes. that he kind of was able to shield the defender, catch it, and then go up and finish. So, yeah, defensively, offensively, was this his most impactful Absolutely. performance of the Absolutely. season? Because it was also he was playing within the the confines of the team, uh -huh. right? Yeah, he's had I games. like how you used confines. You changed up flow. Yeah. <laughs> confines on the fly. But, you found a new word. I loved well, it. Thank you. Uh, but, yeah, he wasn't nailing threes. He wasn't doing these things where you go, oh, my God, this guy's future is incredible. Mm -hmm. No, he played winning basketball now against one of the best teams and probably the best defensive center in the last few years um, in Rudy Gobert. Oh, defensive, yeah, yeah. So without question. Um, yeah, it just a really good game for James Wiseman. One thing also I liked, you mentioned the block shot on Donovan Mitchell. It was a few plays earlier, he bit on a pump fake right. on Donovan Mitchell and got up in the air and fouled. Right. In this one, he stayed more down, uh -huh. and he just came across yep. and blocked it very cleanly. It was, it was nice. And there were a couple other nice defensive plays in the third quarter there. And then, yes, early fourth quarter. He had a couple miscues there. Donovan Mitchell and yeah. Mike Conley. But you're talking about two all-stars <laughs> who were able to get to the bucket and score. So and, and let's not forget also Rudy Gobert. Again, defensive player of the year, like incredible Correct. player. Steph Curry. Made him look silly at times. Uh -huh. So, yes, it happens. Great players yes. can dominate a center. That's just kind of how it's been. The stats were impressive for Wiseman in this one, but this was a qualitative yes. step in the right direction. You could just see he was way more comfortable and he was in the right position at the right time more often. Let's go to break. Fit aid, all that. Granolytics coming up. Okay. Look at that. Direct Look at that. Heart. Director Hart firing away, hit his hand on the button, ready to go. Welcome back to Warriors Outsiders, brought to you by Fide, Drew Grant. Granolytics, just two for you. Wiggins made three or more threes for the first time since Feb 17th. It has been quite a while. He had four threes in that game. We're trying to get through this quick. That's why you said Feb and not February. Correct, and thank you for stopping me. Nico <laughs> Mannion is now five for nine from three over the yeah. last three games since he's gone more time. So you can see him starting to get more confidence and confidence. How about confidence. that steal and then 360 pass Ooh. ahead? That was at a big moment. Uh, how about Steph Curry's just throw the ball behind his head from the corner of the court? Yeah. He, people are screaming, time out, time out, time out. And how about goes, Draymond Green with another successful challenge? Yes. He's three for his last three when he basically it's, says, Steve Kerr, do this right now or I'm quitting. It's, just trust the guy. Yeah. Trust the guy. Hey, those are big two points right there. Although Steve Kerr did say recently on the radio that Draymond was like 0 for 10 last year <laughs> on his challenges. So yeah. He's gotten better. He's yeah. smarter with this. Hey, Lakers game tomorrow. We'll be here with you and boy, oh boy, are we excited. What a fun back-to-back. -back. Can you yeah. imagine if they sweep the Jazz and the Lakers? Stop it!